Hi everyone, my name is Julie Barry, owner and educator for Barry Music STL, a music studio located in St. Louis, Missouri. This is our super quick, I'm gonna make it quick, I promise, coaching video for using the Nashville number system. Wait for it, here it is. And it's gonna be really fun and really practical tools just to help you understand more about this so you can play any worship chord chart anytime, anywhere. In addition to teaching voice, piano, early childhood music, and special needs music enrichment for individuals for over 30 years, I've also been involved with worship arts ministry for the same amount of time. I started leading worship when I was in high school and stayed with it in various um, capacities throughout the next several decades as worship director and worship leader in um, varieties of churches back in my home state of Minnesota and led rehearsals with band members and vocal ensembles and helped mentor people as well throughout the years and just find really great joy in helping young people especially find their gifts and their calling in just being a worship leader and learning those practical tools so when we're practicing behind the scenes and preparing all these really awesome tools when we're in the moment of learning how to lead um, children or young people in worship our heart can be in the worship and less on all of these details because we've practiced right that's why they call it practice so when we're on stage or in a living room or in the quietness of your moment just wanting to worship you're not really thinking about those transitions because you've practiced them out and it's really good to do that so I'm gonna assume that most of you watching this video understand the piano and know how to play it just a little bit, basic chords and basic scales. We're gonna be discussing the number system, scales, chords, and inversions, yep. And if you've taken lessons and your teacher has been on your case about doing your scales, they're not wrong. It's really necessary to know your scales. Guitarists know this very well. And um, pianists like to kind of you know, dust this under the rug, so to speak, like, eh, I can just read music. I mean, <laughs> I don't really have to know all of my scales, right? Wrong, <laughs> because if you know all of your scales, you'll get any chord chart from your worship director at church and know exactly how to play through it, no problemo. So basically, I'm gonna just explain this all in the key of C. You can take this and apply this to any other major key, but we're gonna go ahead and take this to the camera on the keyboard so I can be a little bit more visual with you as well. Okay, so here's the deal. If you know a C major scale, and you know your C major chord, you're in good position right now. Now, if you've learned a scale just by reading the notes on the page, like your teacher has taught you to do, you're a good student, okay? That's awesome. But here's why it's the C major scale. Major scales are made up of a formula. I love visual aid, so here we go, you guys. The major scale formula is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. What does that mean? Well, do you find yourself playing a major scale and not knowing what's sharp and what's flat or which one has more black keys? Well, here is a way to avoid that in the future. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. From C to C is called an octave or an eight scale degree or position scale. And a whole step is two half steps put together. A half step is the smallest distance you can take on this instrument from one pitch to the next pitch like so. So that would be a half step. And a whole step again is two half steps put together. So that's a whole step, whole step, that's a whole step, that's a whole step. Okay, so when you're starting on a C and you want to use that formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, start whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay, and when you're playing your chords, you're always playing your basic triads. You're probably most used to those, and that's awesome. That's a really great place to be. Some of you are even using one finger bass notes. Some of you are even trailing with shell chords, the exterior of the triad, just the one and the five in a five finger position. There's a shell chord, a C shell chord with a C chord, an F chord, a G chord. Let's talk about this really fast. 
When your right hand is playing chords, your thumb is the leader. Your thumb is going to land on a C when you're playing a C chord. You don't have to focus on all five of those fingers um, because if you position yourself in a five finger position and just know that's where you're landing, memorize the chord shape of a root position chord. It's a third interval and a third interval stacked on top of one another. And it's really awesome to know your inversions, you guys. So there's three ways to stack any chord and it just gives it a really cool, unique sound. Root position is third, third chord shape. Um, first inversion is a third interval. Fourth interval, interval means distance chord shape. And I'm speaking of distance intervals between only white keys, okay? Not to be confused with whole steps and half steps. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Those are intervals. And lastly, your second inversion is a fourth, third chord shape. A super cool exercise you can work on just to get comfortable with feeling the chord shape of root position, first inversion, second inversion chords is go through your C major scale positions, scale degrees, C chord, D chord. Here, another visual for you. Here it is. <laughs> Ready? C chord is position one. D minor is position two. E minor is three. F is four. G is five. And A is six. And B is seven. B diminished, excuse me. And C is back to the eight or the one because they're really synonymous. They're the same. Okay. That's called playing your triads on your diatonic positions. Okay. So then if you want to practice your first inversion C chord, so that's root position is C, E, G. First inversion is E, G, C. We're just restacking that. Okay. Now this time E to E is your destination because you're starting first inversion chords on the third position of the tonic chord, okay? I won't get too deep for you today. Just feel that spacing and that chord shape and just keep it locked in your hand, third, fourth, okay? And lastly, the fifth position of your root chord is going to be where you start all of your second inversion chords. And this time we're going from G to G on the diatonic second inversion chord shape positions. Here we go. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So it just gives you a variety of sounds. So if you're playing this kind of a deal with a root position chord, that sounds great. There is your first inversion sound, second inversion sound. Okay. So just gives you a variety. Now let's talk about the number system specifically in the key of C. As we just discussed, there are eight scale degrees or positions. Know your primary chords. If you look at this chord chart, you can see, or this number system chart, excuse me, that the one, the four, and the five are really bold and dark. They're even bigger print. It's because your one, four, and five, your tonic, your subdominant, and your dominant chords in any given key are the primary chords. You should know those the most because if you play any hymn or any worship song, it's always going to use the one, the four, or the five. The minor six is really popular. The minor two is popular. The minor three, as well as the major three, is really popular as well. The dominant seven, not so much. Okay, really, it's just not. So one, four, five. Okay, let's see how this works. If I throw a chord progression at you using the number system, let's just say we want to do the following progression in C. And I'm going to get my visual here. We're going to get rid of all of this and just write this out. Let's go one, six, four, five. Okay. Let's see how that sounds using those positions. Okay. I'm going to use shell chords in my left hand as well. One, and I'm just going to create a simple ostinato ballad -y type thing. One, in sets of fours. I'm going to my six my four, my five. I'm going to do a repeat on that. My six, my four, and my five. Isn't that neat? No reading music necessary. Just know your positions. Now, if we are playing in a different key, Let's go to the key of D, for example. 
Now, right here, this chart is really super helpful as far as visuals go. You know what your sharps are right away. If you were playing in D and you just did not have any idea that F is sharp and C is also sharp in the scale, go back to that little formula that I taught you in the beginning of the video. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Then you can just kind of eyeball those sharps and just know where they are, and then you're all set. Let's go play our root position triads, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, C sharp diminished, and D major. It's that easy, you guys. So that is really me keeping the video super short and not talking a lot wanting to explain just how cool it is when you can convert everything to numbers. It's just less thinking, right? And get really good at a couple of scales right away. So get good with C major, G major, D major, A major, you know, and then work on the next set. There are 12 major keys and 12 minor keys. But really, if you learn these positions, you will cover every single chord that you need to cover in any chord chart. So I will make sure to include um, a link to this chart in this YouTube video. I hope this was really helpful for you today. If you're ever looking for new ideas for ostinato patterns or different ways to play inversions on a worship chord chart, please um, indicate so in the comments below. Thank you so much.